Hey, Nick, can I have some of the popsicles, please? Asher yelled out to me while I was laying on the couch with an ice pack resting on my chest. It was a hot, humid day in the middle of the rural outskirts of upstate New York on a Friday afternoon. Me, my younger brother, had just gotten home from school, bored as hell while we boiled alive indoors and outdoors. No, we have to wait until Wednesday. But it's my birthday, so I should be able to have one. Asher said in an annoying, entitled tone. Not your birthday till Wednesday, dude. Plus, Mom and Dad said. I was annoyed, uncomfortable, sweating, and felt like a husk. I was 14 while my younger brother was turning 11. We were home alone until Sunday morning while our parents were out on a business trip. Asher closed the freezer door after peeking inside and lazily walked over to the couch where he fell over and landed on top of me. Dude, what the hell? Get off me, I yelled out. He groaned. Yeah, okay, I literally don't care, I said. I shoved him off the couch, and he got up, looking out onto the porch. Can we go look for snakes outside? He asked. You can. I'm tired, I closed my eyes, wanting to take a nap. You're always tired. He said as he walked over to the glass sliding door. I watched him looking out the window, feeling too weak to move. It was so hot it felt like I was melting into the couch. Mom and Dad had all this time to go on dinners, trips, and visits, yet they didn't have time to get someone to fix the damn air conditioning. A knock from the front door echoed through the house, catching Asher's attention. He stood up and went to answer it. Don't answer it, I said in a weak, monotone voice. Why? Because it could be a serial killer waiting to make you his next victim. Shut up, Nick, you're not funny. The knock then evolved into multiple fists pounding at the door. This is the FBI. Open up, you're all under arrest. Yelled Jacob's muffled voice from the other side of the door. Okay, open it, I said, annoyed. Asher raced to open the door, letting Jacob and Trevor inside. They were the two closest friends we had, both of them in the same class as me. They raced inside. The disgusting odor of hot sweat permeated off of them. Nick, you'll never guess what we found in the woods. Trevor excitedly yelled out. We found an abandoned treehouse. Jacob followed after. Trevor elbowed Jacob, and they both looked at me, ready to run back outside. My interest peaked as I sat up on the couch. Whereat I curiously asked. It's further past the quarry. Jacob said, trying to catch his breath like a 15-minute walk past it. I want to go. Please, Nick, let's go check it out. Asher yelled aloud. I sighed, getting up off the couch. I looked at the time as though I had something important coming up. 3.16 p.m. The three were staring at me excitedly waiting for an answer. The... Yeah, all right, I guess I said, shrugging my shoulders. Yes. Trevor yelled out. All right, let's go quick. Trevor ran out of the house, followed by Jacob and Asher. I jogged towards them and exited the house. They all hopped on their bikes that were hastily thrown on the messy toy-covered lawn. Mom and Dad had told us that we needed to clean the front and backyard, but our logic was to wait until the last second before touching anything. We were two geniuses competing with Tesla's IQ. Our house was completely surrounded by miles of woods on a small, quiet road. The nearest neighbor was a half mile away, so if anything were to happen at home, then we were on our own. I honestly don't know what our parents were thinking during that point of time, always going out. We drove about a mile and a quarter down the road on our bikes, the wind feeling amazing against my sweaty face. Afterwards, we drove onto a trail off to the side of the road and continued through the forest. The sun was beaming through the trees, most of which were just barely growing their leaves back. When we finally got to the quarry, Jacob and Trevor slowed down and got off their bikes. Me and Asher shot each other confused glances. Why are we stopping? I questioned them. The treehouse isn't on the trail. Jacob said, panting as though he'd been running the whole way here. How the hell did you guys even find it? I asked. We were looking for new spots to catch water snakes. Trevor yelled out as he dropped his bike and quickly walked towards the thick forest. Asher and Jacob along with myself quickly followed behind, all eager to see this treehouse. Me, Trevor, and Jacob had always dreamed about having a treehouse or something of that matter to hang out in and have sleepovers inside, like a headquarters for our group. 
Since this was out in the middle of absolutely nowhere, it would most likely need some touch-ups which we could easily do over time. Oh, I'm tired. Asher whined. Quit being such a baby, I said, not wanting to deal with his crap. You knew it was going to be a long walk. I know, but still, can we stop for a second? Asher said, trying to sit down. No, we're literally like five minutes away. Trevor said, not turning to look towards Asher. We continued on, Asher continuing to whine the entire way. He'd always been whiny and entitled, but I still felt bad for him since he didn't really have a lot of friends because of it. But unfortunately, that's what happens when mommy and daddy don't know how to say no. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited out of my mind to see the treehouse though, but I wanted to look cool and kept calm on the outside. After about 20 minutes in total of traveling through the forest, leaves crunching after every step, birds singing and chirping accompanied by the noises of a bratty little brother, we finally arrived. A very tall, skinny oak tree sat there in a small clearing, about 50 feet away from any trees. It was a strange sight, but it made sense why whoever built the treehouse chose that particular tree. The treehouse itself was decent size, providing enough room for about five kids our age to sit comfortably inside. It wrapped around the tree about 30 feet in the air and a singular ladder led inside. It seemed as though it had been there for so long that the tree started to morph around the edges of it like it was clay. The treehouse was in amazing shape. A little dusty, but no rot, overgrowth, nothing at all. Dude, this is freaking amazing, I blurted out. Have you guys gone inside yet? Nah. Hey, Trevor said, shaking his head. We wanted to get you guys first. He looked over at us with an excited grin. It was an amazing sight for sure. The wood of the treehouse was a light color, almost a whitish yellow. Fine details were all over the outside of the walls and windows, painted red and dark brown. This was the kind of treehouse that was made by a father who had a passion for craftsmanship, made specifically for his young children to make wonderful memories in. Yet, for some odd reason, it was out there, almost three miles deep in the woods. We didn't question it. I wish we would've. But we were young, stupid, and naive. At least that's what I keep telling myself. I went up next to the ladder and rested my hand on the tree, however I instantly pulled it back. The bark of the tree felt off. In fact, it didn't feel like bark at all. It was somewhat warm with a soft nubuck leathery feel. I slowly went to feel again. It definitely was not bark. I couldn't even keep my hand on it longer than two seconds without feeling disgusted. I honestly thought the tree was rotten, which made me hesitant to climb up the ladder. I didn't say anything so as to not spoil the mood, so I stood back to look back up at the treehouse again. Trevor, Jacob, and Asher blabbed about their ideas of what they could do with the treehouse. Trevor and Jacob always tried to include Asher in stuff which was nice, but I still always felt annoyed with his presence most of the time. Jacob asked who should go up first. Trevor and Asher both instantly said they would, so they did rock, paper, scissors to settle on who would be the lucky number one. Trevor won, making Asher a bit upset. Trevor smiled and told him that it's best he goes up first, just to make sure it's safe. Asher surprisingly shut up, finally understanding the concerns of someone else's viewpoint other than his own. I was a bit annoyed since he never listened to me, but whatever. Trevor started to make his way up the tall, skinny ladder, all of us waiting in anticipation for what he would see up there. The subtle wind caused the tree to sway in a strange way, like it was doing its best to blend in with the other trees around it, but didn't know how. That's the best way I can describe it. When he finally reached the top, he didn't say anything at first. We couldn't see him, as he had entered the treehouse. What's it look like up there? Jacob yelled out. It's pretty empty, only a couple cobwebs. Trevor yelled back. Asher then started to eagerly climb up the ladder. I stopped him and he looked back at me with an annoyed expression. What? He whined. I was about to say something, but I tripped over my tongue and couldn't remember what I was going to say. Just let him go, bro. Jacob said with a face of pity. I motioned for him to go, and he continued up the ladder. In that moment, a strange gut feeling washed over me, like a primitive instinct was kicking in. I didn't say anything, but I felt sick to my stomach. I didn't want my brother going up there, but what was I going to say? You can't go up there because I said so, yeah, right. After Asher got up there, him and Trevor called out to us to join them. Jacob started climbing up the ladder next, 
and I was debating if I should follow after. My turn came, and I began to slowly make my way up the ladder. It felt much higher than what it had seemed from the ground, the soft wind blowing against my face. The sounds of the branches swaying and brushing up against each other echoed through the trees, almost sounding like a deep groan of a sleeping giant. When I finally reached the top, I rested on the floor of the treehouse, looking around at the interior. The tree was in the center of the room, with what looked to be faint vomit stains covering the wooden floor. It even kind of smelled like vomit. Jacob pointed out the smell and said that they could bring in some air fresheners when they came back with some decor. The feeling in my stomach got worse, looking out the windows seeing the seemingly infinite void of trees around us, instead of the nice cozy backyard of a small home made me feel uneasy. Something was off, and it was eating me alive, my excitement slowly diminishing. Meanwhile, the others were still geeking out over the place. So what should we name this place? Jacob asked. The Cool Kids Club, with three Ks. Trevor snickered. As they went back and forth, I noticed something on the tree itself. A strange mark about three feet wide. It was like a seam carved into the bark, but instead of the bark being scraped off, it was curved inwards into itself. Very similar to a flap of fat. I've seen some pretty strange tree formations, so I brushed it off. I tried keeping it cool, but this pit in my stomach was forming into a black hole, so I made up an excuse for us to leave. Why don't we go back to our place to get some stuff to bring back here, I said, having no intentions of returning, we can bring snacks. Yeah, all right, Trevor said. We could also stop by my place to get my backpack to fit more stuff. Asher was clearly upset. But I don't want to go. He whimpered. We're literally going to come right back. Jacob sighed. So I can stay here and wait for you guys. Asher argued. No, Mom and Dad told me to keep an eye on you at all times I argued back. Well, it's almost my birthday. He said folding his arms. After a little more pointless arguing, he begrudgingly agreed to come back down. I was relieved to finally get out of there, but when we got to the bottom I saw Jacob look at Asher with a guilty expression. It's not his fault, he felt bad for him even though we were coming right back. To cheer him up, he handed Asher a small army knife he got from Boy Scouts and told him that he could carve all our initials into the tree at the top, so that way people would know it was ours. Asher lit up with excitement and his mood instantly shifted. Why don't I come with you, I said quickly. I can do this by myself, I'm not a baby. Asher said, annoyed with me. I wish I had stopped him. I wish I could have done more, something, anything more. But I didn't. I watched as he eagerly made his way up the ladder carrying the knife in honor of marking our territory. Jacob and Trevor cheered him on as I nervously watched. Hell yeah, Asher. Trevor yelled, wait. You got this, birthday boy. Jacob followed after. I didn't know why I was nervous, but I just was like my guardian angel was screaming at me to go and get him. Unfortunately, that would be the last time I ever saw him again. The tree groaned with the wind. Something was definitely off. Asher got to the top and went to carve the names, but I lost sight of him. Yo, is everything okay, man? Trevor asked me. Yeah, yeah, I'm good, I replied back. My eyes were dead focused on the treehouse, and I could feel Jacob and Trevor looking at me for a few more moments before turning their gazes back to the treehouse. I was imagining Asher struggling to even leave a mark in the tree with his little noodle arms. Usually a thought like that would make me laugh internally, but I only felt sad. The type of sadness when you see someone who hasn't had a good life or is struggling physically spill their drink everywhere or trip on a treadmill at the gym, as silly as that is. I shook the thought off and looked back up at the treehouse. We waited for a few minutes with no call-outs from Asher. Do you need help up there? Jacob called out. Jacob and Trevor chuckled, waiting for a response. A few seconds went by only to be greeted with nothing. Asher, I called out. We were all waiting for a response, but nothing came. I wanted to assume that he was dead focused on carving those initials, but after we called out some more, we still got no response. But Asher, stop messing around, man. Trevor yelled out. I then grabbed a hold of the ladder making my way up, anticipating Asher jumping out at me at the entrance. As I made my way up I could have sworn I saw movement underneath the bark, like there was something trying to escape from it. 
It reminded me of when a snake swallowed a rat or something of that size, and you see that lump moving down its throat. However, I only saw it for about a second, so I assumed it was the tree swaying in the wind or something like that. I got to the top and looked around, but saw nothing. Asher, I said aloud, assuming he was behind the other side of the tree. I crawled inside. The smell of vomit and bile assaulted my nostrils, causing me to tear up. I made my way all the way around, but he was nowhere to be seen. My stomach dropped. Where could he have gone? I looked at the floor and saw the army knife lying there in a puddle of what looked like greasy yellow slime. I took a good look at it and then turned my attention towards the tree. The same mark I saw before had slime dripping down from the tight crevice with a new small mark above it, looking like a little scab. The sight reminded me of the closed mouth of a toothless old person, saliva running down their lips. It looked like Asher started carving but didn't finish. I just sat there, trying to process what I was looking at. Jacob and Trevor were calling out to me, but it didn't register with me. A thousand thoughts raced through my head. I wanted to throw up. It was at that moment when the screams of Jacob and Trevor yelling out for me to come down finally got through to me. I nearly fell all the way down as I quickly hurried down the ladder. As soon as I reached the bottom, I saw why they were screaming for me. The tree was breathing. It wasn't the wind. It wasn't an illusion. It was literally breathing, letting out a soft, deep gurgled groan with every breath. I couldn't believe it. It felt like a dream. But it was real. As real as you and me. The treehouse was alive, and it had made a meal of my baby brother. The strange movement I saw when climbing up the tree was Asher's silhouette trying to kick and escape from its throat as it swallowed him. The thought made me shake in fear uncontrollably I thought I would pass out. Trevor and Jacob ran for it, but I sat there for a few more seconds with my thoughts racing. I could only imagine the fear Asher had been experiencing at that moment, screaming out in terror, calling out for someone to save him, his cries unable to be heard, not being able to escape his claustrophobic fate, being digested alive with no one to help him, knowing that mom and dad didn't know where he was. He had gone up there excited thinking that he was finally part of the friend group. Instead, he had been eaten alive by a treehouse, or at least something pretending to be a treehouse. The bark of the tree was squirming like there was muscle twitching and contracting underneath it. The branches started moving in an alien-like way, something I'm unable to describe further than that. The sounds of a deep monstrous, wet gurgling noise echoed through the forest as I followed behind Jacob and Trevor. We made it back to the quarry where we hopped on our bikes and rode to the nearest police station about five miles away. What happened after that was a blur. I don't remember much, but what I do remember is that we told the cops that my brother got eaten by something through incoherent cries. We came back to the same spot with the police, but the treehouse was now gone. Not without leaving a giant crater in the ground. Although they were presented with a strange hole in the ground, that didn't explain why my brother was missing. We were taken to the police station for questioning where we were separated into different rooms to explain ourselves. The police were stumped. All three of our stories matched up perfectly with each other, so we were either great at lying, or we did in fact witness something supernatural. They gave a call to my parents explaining the situation and they rushed over as fast as they could. My mom and dad were heartbroken. They never believed my story though. They rarely went on trips again, and if they did they brought me along. I'm pretty sure mom and dad think I did something to him, and I don't blame them. Asher remains missing to this day. I feel so stupid. It's my fault I didn't stop him. I want to blame Jacob for giving him that stupid army knife, but deep down I'm still drenched with the guilt of thinking that I could have prevented everything, all by not having him answer the door. Maybe then Jacob or Trevor would be missing, perhaps both, but at least my brother would still be here as selfish as that sounds. Seventeen years later I have a child of my own now, turning nine next week and a beautiful wife. I rarely speak to my parents. These events linger in the back of my mind like a parasite. I live about seven hours away from where my old childhood home was since my wife didn't feel comfortable leaving her hometown. I've decided to write all of this down the best I could remember, because when I got up this morning to complete my daily ritual of making my coffee to stare out the backyard window, I saw something that took me back in time. Far out in the tree line, past the family of deer eating the grass, stood something unnatural that did not belong there. The same tree house from all those years ago, 